Hello everyone, welcome to Arcade Life. Today is the second video I am doing in honor of Black History Month. Uh, and it's actually a video that I've been looking forward to doing for uh, quite a while now. Because it is about one of my favorite historical figures. An individual who had an incredibly fascinating and interesting life uh, filled with... <laughs> What seemed to be what one would, if you didn't know about it, would be larger than life sort of unrealistic accomplishments, um, you know, sort of myth, if you will. Uh, but they are things that actually happened. Uh, so, with that in mind, we're going to hop right into the video. So, the subject of today's video is the life and times of Thomas Alexander Dumas, a mixed, uh, a mixed French and African uh, military commander from the Napoleonic Wars. Now, before we get into the main meat of the video, I do feel that there must be a disclaimer uh, put in here. Um, I am American <laughs> uh, and am specifically from the United States South, uh, the state of Georgia. So, obviously, I do not know very well how to pronounce French words. Now, I have gone and looked at uh, the correct pronunciations of the French words and names that I will mention in this video. However, it's important to note that that doesn't necessarily mean that I will, even knowing the correct pronunciation, will still be able to correct them, uh, pronounce them correctly. So I do apologize in advance. I will not have time to necessarily stop uh, and try to correct every single attempt. I will do it sometimes, but I can't promise I will do it all the time. Uh, so I do apologize to any French viewers um, who watching this uh, for my what, very probable uh, butchering of the French language. I do apologize in advance. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's move on to the meat of the video. All right, so first we're going to start with his early life. So Thomas Alexander Dumas was born to a French nobleman and an enslaved African woman in the French colony of Saint Domingue, uh, modern day Haiti, in uh, roughly around 1762 CE. Now, of course, this is a rough estimate because oftentimes the children of enslaved individuals um, don't necessarily have that great records revolving around their birth necessarily. Uh, so that's important to keep in mind when thinking about his birth. <laughs> so for much of his uh, early years, Thomas Alexander and his family, including his mother and three sisters, were brutally forced to work on their father's sugar plantations. Um, and in fact, now I do want to point out that in, in the United States, uh, working on plantations was already horrific, and these are plantations that included uh, sugar plantations like you see here uh, that were also found in Santo Domingue, um, but also cotton and tobacco plantations and rice plantations. That being, said, that being said, as horrible as those were, the plantations in the Caribbean uh, such as San Domingue um, in Jamaica and in Britain, the, the British colony of Jamaica and such, had reputations for being even worse. So colonies in, for example, South Carolina or Georgia were horrible, abysmal. They were terrible places to be around, treated their enslaved Africans, uh, individually enslaved African Americans, horribly. But those treatments paled in comparison to what the enslaved Africans were facing in colonies such as San Domingo. Uh, so keep that in mind as to thinking when you think about the sort of hardships that Tama Alexander and his family were going through during this period of time. Uh, also, um, something that was very common uh, happened to Tama Alexander. Uh, at some point in his youth, Tom Alexander's mother and three sisters were sold by his father. And again, as I said, this was a very common practice 
It was performed in, of course, the United States all the time. Um, it was performed in British colonies, uh, in the few Danish colonies that were in the Caribbean, uh, and, of course, was performed in French colonies uh, in San Domingo. Now, of course, you're noticing that this picture uh, looks more like the uh, the White House. Uh, I do believe this picture is from the U.S., but it still shows the sort of uh, hardship and sorrow that would have happened uh, that Tom Alexander would have gone through uh, when his mother and three sisters were sold by his father. Then, at age 14, Toma Alexander himself would be sold for 800 French uh, livers uh, in port au uh to a French captain, uh, only for his father shortly to buy him back, uh, and then proceed to take himself and uh, Toma Alexander to France, where he would grant him his freedom. Uh, once they were in France, <clears throat> Toma Alexander would live with his father while he would attend the academy, uh, the academy of Nicolas Texier de Bossier, uh, where he is given a what is essentially a young nobleman's uh, higher education, and he is also taught swordsmanship by Chevalier de Saint George. Uh, and another mixed race man from the French Caribbean. Uh, and this would happen in a 10 year period between 1776 to 1786 CE. Which leads us into our next section the military career of Thomas Alexander. So Thomas Alexander would join the 6th Regiment of the Queen's Dragoons in 1786 CE. Here is a, a picture of what the uh, Queen's Dragoons would look like. Following that, uh, the French Revolution would essentially kick off only a couple of years after he joined the Queen's Dragoons. So following the beginning of the French Revolution, Thomas Alexander and his unit would be sent to the small town of Vivre Cotre uh, uh, after the town's newly formed National Guard leader, innkeeper uh, Claude Lebré, uh had called them to come in response to a wave of rural violence known as the Great Fear, not to be mistaken for the Reign of Terror, which we will talk about just in a little while. Uh, during this time, Dumas, uh, Thomas Alexander Dumas would large at the uh, Labouré's hotel for four months, during which time he would become engaged to Claude Labouré's daughter, Marie Louise. Uh, and by all accounts, they this was a marriage of love, not, say, an arranged marriage or anything like that. By all accounts, they both genuinely loved each other. Uh, then, uh, Tama Alexander would serve as part of the riot police, along with the National Guard units under the Marquis de Lafayette, during the Champ de Mars massacre of the French Revolution. Uh, and this would happen in 1791 CE. Uh, and here is uh, the Marquis de Lafayette, and here is that massacre. Then, shortly after this, he would be promoted to the second command of the Black Legion, uh, which he would accept uh, as a commission, uh, a commission as a lieutenant colonel uh, and second in command of this uh, Black Legion. Uh, the official name of this legion was the Free Legion of Americans uh, in the South, um, and this legion would be put under the command of actually his former teacher, Chevalier de Saint George, and he would accept this commission in 1792 CP. Um, here is actually Thomas Alexander as the second in command, uh, and here is of course Saint uh, Saint George again. While stationed with uh, the Black Legion in Amiens, uh, Thomas Alexander would marry uh, Marie Louise uh, on November 28th of 1792 CE. Later, after Saint George and Thomas Alexander defended the city of Lille uh, from forces supporting a coup d'etat started by General Charles Francois Dumouriez, uh, Saint George would actually be accused of misusing government funds, and then the Black Legion would be disbanded. And this happened in 1793 CE. 
unfortunately for Tomal Alexander, this would not be the end of his military career, as he would actually be promoted to the rank of Brigadier General in the Army of North before briefly being promoted to Commander-in-Chief of the Army of the Western Pyrenees several months later. Uh, and this happened somewhere between July to September of 1793 CE. Then, later on in that exact same year, Tamar Alexander would be given command of the Army of the Alps, specifically on December 22nd of 1793 CE. With, under the, uh, <clears throat> sorry, commanding the Army of the Alps, Tamar Alexander would launch a campaign in the Alps centered on defeating the Austrian and P uh, Piedmontese troops that uh, were defending the uh, glacier-covered Little Saint Bernard Pass uh, at Mont um, on the French Piedmont border. And here are Austrian troops here, and here are Piedmontese troops here. Uh, during this time, um, Thomas Alexander, who was a staunch abolitionist and a believer of republicanism, i.e., a believer of uh, independence and self rule and things like that, uh, was pleased to hear of the abolishment of slavery in the French National Convention on February 4th, 1794 CE. After that, Thomas Alexander would proceed uh, to launch several assaults on Montseny, um, with the final attack actually involving. Uh, Tomah Alexander equipping his troops with ice crampons, these sort of ice spikes that you see people who, like, say, uh, climb Mount Everest and such, or climb mountains in the Alps, uh, where he, he and his army would proceed to scale the ice cliffs of the glacier and then, you know, storm the fortress, the, you know, the, the uh, fort, fortress, what, what have you, um, that was the base of the Austrian and Piedmontese troops where they would then defeat them and capture between 900 to 1,700 prisoners. Uh, and this would all happen between April and May of 1794 CE. Though his victory did win Thomas, uh, though Thomas Alexander's victory did win him praise from political leaders in Paris, uh, during the Reign of Terror, the time period in which the uh, a lot of the original leaders of the French Revolution uh, began to essentially kill anyone they saw fit for treason, for any minor offense, you know, for basically anything that offended them, uh, Tomal Alexander would essentially become the next victim of this. Uh, so he would be called to uh, Paris during this reign of terror uh, to be called and brought, for, uh, <clears throat> brought before the Committee of Public Safety. Uh, this would happen in June 1794, uh, CE. Uh, and this was for reasons unspecified, but probably considering the, you know, what the kind of terror is uh, notorious and infamous for, uh, it was probably, Tom Alexander was probably about to face charges of treason. However, probably very uh, astutely, uh, uh, Tom Alexander saw through this, or it can be assumed he saw through this. I'm, I'm of course, making an assumption, but it's not a huge leap in, uh, <laughs> in logic. Uh, so probably under the assumption and the realization that this would happen, uh, Tomah Alexander would decide, no, I'm not going to Paris, and he would delay his arrival to Paris until mid-July uh, and would actually not be seen before the Committee of Public Safety before the uh, Reign of Terror ended on uh, July 27th, 1794 CE. And here is a picture of the Reign of Terror, uh, and there is a guillotine, which is um, one of the things that is most well known from the Reign of Terror. Then would come uh, further promotions and military campaigns in Tomah Alexander's life. Uh, Tomah Alexander would be reassigned to lead the Army of the West. Uh, and is responsible for consolidating the recent government victory over a massive insurgency in the region of Vendée, uh, against, which was uh, conducted against the French Revolutionary government. And while there, he focuses on increasing military discipline, uh, and especially focuses on eliminating 
uh, abuses on the local population at the hand of soldiers. He was really not pleased when he found out um, soldiers were preying on the local populace, something that would continue later in his life that we'll talk about just in a little bit later in the video. Uh, and this would all happen between August and October of 1794 CE. Then Thomas Alexander would go on to serve under General Jean-Baptiste Clébert uh, in the Army of the Rhine, where he would participate in the French attack on Dusseldorf, uh, but he would be wounded in this campaign. Uh, and this would happen in 1795 CE. And here is Jean-Baptiste Clébert. Now we go to uh, our next section, uh, the uh, Thomas Alexander's campaigns in Italy. So Thomas Alexander would join the Army of Italy where he would uh, first serve under somebody that I'm sure, if not all, at least most people uh, have heard of, especially with um, the recent movie by Ridley Scott. And that individual was Napoleon Bonaparte. Um, but while, <laughs> while Tamal Alexander served under Napoleon Bonaparte, um, by all accounts, these two hated each other. Uh, and it really went back to the beginning of their tensions when they would begin to um, argue over uh, Tomah Alexander's resistance uh, against Napoleon's policy of allowing French troops to expropriate local property, i.e. Uh, Tomah Alexander would uh, protest and would actively refuse to let the French troops under Napoleon prey on the local populace of, uh, of Italy. Which again, go back, going back to his command of the army in Vendée, that, you know, like I said, there's a reason I brought that up, because this is something that continued throughout his life. He absolutely refused to prey on the local populace, which, of course, again, brought him into conflict and led to a lifelong hatred between Napoleon Bonaparte and himself. Uh, and he would join this army of Italy in 1796 CE. On March of 1798 CE, Tomas Alexander would join Napoleon's armada that was planning to conquer Egypt, and he would be appointed commander of all cavalry in the so-called Army of the Orient. Uh, and here is the fleet of the armada sailing to Egypt, sailing into Egypt specifically, and there is the Army of the Orient. Uh, however, despite early French victories at Egyptian cities such as uh, Alexandria and Cairo, um, conditions of heat, thirst, fatigue, light, and lack of supplies for the troops on the desert march uh, would lead to several French soldiers uh, committing suicide, which in turn would lead to Thomas Alexander and several of the other generals under Napoleon Bonaparte meeting while camped at uh, Damanhur, uh, the city of Damanhur, uh, where they would vent criticisms of Napoleon's leadership and would actually discuss the possibility of refusing to march beyond Cairo. This would all happen between roughly June 30th to July 21st, 1798 CE. Uh, however, uh, after uh, that conversation, Tomal, uh, Tomal Alexander would actually participate in the battle, of the so-called Battle of the Pyramids, where he would chase retreating Mamluk horsemen, uh, the sort of elite cavalry unit of Egypt, uh, off the battlefield. Uh, this would happen specifically actually on the day uh, right around that conversation, uh, July 21st, 1798 CE. After learning of the earlier mutinous talk, Napoleon would go on to confront Tomal Alexander, leading to a massive argument, which, uh, according to all records, resulted in Tomal Alexander essentially saying, I'm going to leave for France. Do I, do I have your permission or not? Because I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, upon which Napoleon was like, sure, leave. I don't even want you here. Uh, however, uh, despite their uh, very angry uh, parting. Uh, <clears throat> the destruction of the French Armada at the Battle of the Nile 
uh, would lead to Tama Alexander being unable to get out of Egypt. Uh, and this battle would happen on August uh, 1798 CE. And here's the Battle of the Nile here. Uh, after that, uh, in October of 1798 CE, Tama Alexander would actually be very important in putting down an anti-French revolt in Cairo. Where he would actually charge into the Al uh, the Al uh, Al Azhar <laughs> Mosque on horseback. Afterwards, at least according to Tama Alexander's son, uh, with you know son's account, uh, which draws largely from the uh, memories of Tama uh, Tama Alexander's aide de camp de Moncourt, um, Napoleon supposedly, according to his records, uh, would tell Tama Alexander that a painting would be commissioned uh, in his honor. Uh, however, it's important to note that the Girodet painting that Napoleon did eventually commission, the commission 11 years later, uh, does actually, it, if it shows to my Alexander, he's been whitewashed. Let's put it that way. Um, because the painting shows a white man charging into the mosque, uh, not a black man, which is, of course, what uh, to my Alexander was, was a black man, uh, which, which, which is probably uh, a big uh, middle finger uh, from Napoleon to um, uh, to Tomah Alexander. After that, a after the battle, the uh, putting down the revolt in Cairo, uh, Tomah Alexander would finally be able to board a small ship called the uh, Belle Maltese um, and would set sail for France only for the ship to be forced to land in the Kingdom of Naples uh, because of a storm on March 1799 CE. Which brings me to my next section. So after Tomah Alexander and the crew of his ship were forced to land in the Kingdom of Naples, uh, Ferdinand IV, the King of Naples, and his allies, the so-called Holy Faith Army, uh, both of whom were at war with France at the time, proceed to imprison Tomah Alexander and the rest of the passengers of the ship. During this time, Tomah Alexander is uh, malnourished and kept in isolation for over two years, eventually resulting in him being partially paralyzed and almost blind in one eye. Uh, with his overall physique being broken, despite aid from uh, secret local uh, pro-French groups, uh, which would bring him medicine and books of remedies. Uh, and this is what one of those books of remedies would look like. Uh, and here is actually a picture of maybe sort of what a cell, the cell would look like until my Alexander stayed in for the uh, two-year period that he was imprisoned in the Kingdom of Naples between 1799 and 1801 CE. During this time, Tomah Alexander's wife, Marie-Louise, uh, would repeatedly lobby the French government and Napoleon, who had uh, been newly crowned emperor of France, uh, asking them to find and rescue her husband with little success. Uh, in fact, all records seem to indicate that Napoleon just sort of kept putting it off and probably really generally didn't care, because after all, again, Tomah Alexander and Napoleon hated each other. So because of this, it wouldn't be until uh, French forces under the command of Thomas Alexander's uh, fellow French general, uh, Joachim Murat, defeated uh, Ferdinand the Force Army that uh, Thomas Alexander would finally be released in March of 1801 CE. And here is Joachim Murat here. Which leads us to our next section. So... Uh, after his release and after his return to France, Thomas Alexander uh, would not be rewarded, uh, awarded a pension by the French government and would continue to struggle uh, to uh, support his family during this period of time, despite repeated requests uh, to Napoleon for back pay for his lost time in Naples and a new commission in the military. Uh, and of course, all of this was probably because Napoleon Bonaparte really hated, uh, and Tom Alexander as well, they both really hated each other, and Napoleon Bonaparte probably 
had no interest in reinstating him. After all, they they left after an argument uh, that had been started because Tomah Alexander uh, uh, essentially uh, was part of a group that was, I don't want to say sowing dissent, but they were definitely uh, not happy with Napoleon's command. And this would all happen between 1801 and 1806 CE. Uh, with this time period ending with the death of Tomah Alexander, uh, who died of stomach cancer on February 26th of 1806 CE. And here is actually his gravestone here. Which leads us to our next section. So after the death of of Thomas Alexander Dumas, the Dumas family would be plunged into even deeper poverty, with the children being unable to get even a basic secondary education, and Marie uh, Lavare Dumas uh, being forced to work in a tobacconist shop to make ends meet, um, all of which would lead the family to blame Napoleon Bonaparte's, quote, implacable hatred for their poverty. Uh, a sentiment that was probably not that untrue, because again, uh, I, I know I've said this several times, uh, but it can't be said enough, Thomas Alexander and Napoleon Bonaparte hated each other, openly so. So anyways, uh, with that, here is a picture of a tobacconist shop, and here is a picture of what one of the sort of basic um, sort of public secondary schools would have been like during that time. Uh, which leads us to our last section, the legacy of the great Thomas Alexander Dumas. So Thomas Alexander Dumas' legacy is a very long-lasting legacy, and to his credit, Thomas Alexander Dumas is fairly well known in France. However, <laughs> as you guessed from the point of this video and the, the previous video I did, that doesn't mean that he's well known outside of France. Uh, so with that um, in mind, uh, here is his legacy. So Thomas Alexander's legacy begins with his son, Alexander Dumas, who would become a writer uh, who would base several of his protagonists and stories on his father and his exploits. Uh, the book, The Three Musketeers and the protagonist D'Artagnan uh, would be based off of Thomas Alexander's military exploits, while Edmund Dantes and, and uh, the Book of Monte Cristo would be based off of Thomas Alexander's uh, imprisonment in the Kingdom of Naples. And here is Alexander Dumas right here. Then, continuing with the, the legacy, uh, Thomas Alexander's grandson, um, Alexander Dumas Fuchs, or uh, Junior would go on to become a celebrated French playwright in the second half of the 19th century. Also, despite the hatred between uh, Alexander Dumas and Napoleon, uh, Thomas Alexander Dumas' name would actually be inscribed on the Arc de Triomphe, specifically the South Wall. And you can see that right here uh, in the second row or column right here, uh, the Dumas name there. So Dumas' name is literally engraved in stone um, for potentially hundreds of or thousands of years. Then, as I said, uh, Thomas Alexander's legacy has continued on into this day, as uh, specifically the legacy uh, started by Thomas Alexander's son, Alexander Dumas, um, in which the legacy of having books written about him uh, so to, with that legacy continuing, Thomas Alexander Dumas' life has had several history books written about him, uh, such as the history book by John G. Uh, Gallagher uh, titled General Alexander Dumas, Soldier of the French Revolution, and the Pulitzer Prize winning book by Tom Rees uh, titled The Black Count, Glory, Revolution, Betrayal, and the Real Count of Monte Cristo. Um, I highly recommend this book. This is a very good book about Thomas Alexander's life. So with that, that ends our video on the great Alexander Thomas Alexander Dumas, uh, 
a war hero with exploits that seem to be right out of mythology, um, and a man who one of the, a man who uh, was one of the main uh, military rivals of Napoleon Bonaparte, at least in his early years, and a man who can inspired uh, popular culture for a uh, hundred and some odd, hundred and fifty some odd years after his life, uh, 200 years after his life, sorry. So uh, with that, that ends our video. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you would like to see me uh, cover any of the subjects I mentioned in the video in greater detail in later videos, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section, and remember to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you all have a good day.